So it's Friday night and you're feeling a little bit tired and really just want to flop on the couch. But you've got this nagging feeling that you're forgetting about something you're supposed to be doing. You can't really think of what it is, so you just flop on the couch. That's bad, right? Depends what you're not doing. Hey everyone, Organizing Hire, welcome or welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about how reflecting on your to-do list can help you to confidently do nothing or something. Really, just whatever you want, you're an adult. First, if you haven't seen my videos on the first three steps of the GTD workflow process, go back and watch those and then come back here. I'll link that in the description box below. So let's say you're at home, you're not quite sure what to do, Imagine if you had a list of all of the things that you could be doing while you're at home and you could review this list and choose if any of those things on that list are more important than flopping down on the couch. When you organize your to-do list using what GTD calls contexts, you can create that list. Now you probably don't think about the fact that you already use contexts naturally because it's kind of common sense. For example, if you're like most people that I know, myself included, you don't go grocery shopping every day. What you likely do is keep a running list of all of the things that you need to get when you're at the grocery store. Then you take that list maybe once a week or every two weeks whenever you go shopping and all of the things that you need to buy while you're at the grocery store, you can get in one trip. The grocery store is a context. You need to be at the grocery store in order to get all of those items on your list. When you organize your to-do list by contexts, it's like you're making a shopping list. When you have the tool or the tools that you need to do that task, like when you're at the grocery store, then you can engage with that task. And you'll also have a list of all of the other things that you could be doing while you have that same tool, a list of the other things that you could be buying while you're at the grocery store. Now, sometimes contexts get a bad rap because people think, oh, contexts are so restrictive and they're silly because it suggests that if I'm not at a phone that I can't do something on my phone list. The context list is not about being static. So let's use the grocery store example. If you come back from the grocery store and realize you've forgotten that the one ingredient that you need for that master recipe that you're going to make, you wouldn't just say, oh, well, I guess I'm not going to make that recipe. Well, you might. You would go back and get the thing that you need. You would put yourself in that context. That way you can engage with that task. <sighs> Okay, I'm going back to the store for eggs. The whole point of context is not to restrict you. For me, it's about helping me focus and work efficiently and effectively. So here are two things to reflect on to help you feel good about what you're doing and what you're not doing. First, look at your calendar. If you're anything like me, your calendar is like your personal assistant telling you where you need to be, when you need to be there, and what you need to do. A calendar is a list of things that you've already committed to do on a certain day and or at a certain time, so it's like a to-do list too. I've had days where I'd look at my calendar and realize I had no unscheduled time. I just had back-to-back -back meetings from eight to five and I may or may not have gotten a lunch scheduled in there. If I had a day like that and I also noticed that maybe I had two big deadlines that same day, I had to decide to either A, renegotiate those deadlines or B, work late that night. Now, because I've been doing my weekly review, which I'll talk about a little bit later in this video, it's actually very rarely that these kinds of days happened because I got in front of it. But if I look at my calendar and realize I only have one meeting or I don't have any meetings, then I would actually spend that day focusing on getting ahead on projects or doing some large big picture tasks. The second step is to review your list of next actions. If you've been following along in this series, you know that your next actions list is a list of all of the things that you need to do to move forward on projects that you're working on. All of my next actions are in Todoist by context. I have a whole video where I talk about my Todoist setup. When I'm looking at my next actions list, I always look by context. My contexts are usually a tool like a computer or a location or sometimes a person like my boss. I also have context for my energy level, which usually means my mental energy, but sometimes can mean my physical energy as well as duration. So how long something is going to take me to complete. If I'm short on time, I can look at a five minute context list and feel pretty good about knocking off a couple of quick things. If I have more time though, I might do some longer tasks. Making sure that your system is complete and current is gonna be the most important thing for you to engage with it properly and to trust it. And that makes you feel confident that you're making the best decisions day to day about what you should be doing or what you're choosing not to do. GTD suggests you do your weekly reviews at least weekly, but really do them as often as you need to to feel current and confident that your system is complete 
complete. In the beginning of the fall semester, for example, things can be really hectic and fast paced. So sometimes I will have two weekly reviews in one week. I'll do one maybe on Monday, and then I'll do another one on Wednesday or Thursday. And that second one is the really the one that helps me to feel the most confident because I can integrate all that new stuff, those new inputs from the week that I wasn't anticipating and make my system complete. And that way I can trust it again. I have a video on my weekly review process where I walk you through it. So definitely check that out if you need some help with doing a weekly review. And finally, and I'm not gonna go into it too much in this video, the GTD book talks about the horizons of focus. There's five different levels. And a lot of times people focus too much on the ground floor day-to-day -day tasks, not realizing that the day-to-day -day tasks are gonna be connected to a larger task. And sometimes those larger focus areas, things like your purpose or goals that you have, are gonna be the driving factor in determining what you do from day to day. So if it's Friday night and you wanna flop on the couch because you haven't been able to spend time with your kid all week, by all means, flop away and feel good about that. So that's all for the reflect step. Stay tuned for my next video where we'll wrap out the series with step five, which is engage. Make sure you like this video if you found anything in here useful and subscribe and hit the bell notification button. That way you're notified when that next video comes out. Thanks for watching.